Hey friends, it's Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm and welcome to another permaculture garden tour and harvest. take a peek at the cucumbers and then we're gonna walk over to the hugo culture bed we'll walk through our other permaculture beds and finish off with the berms and swales so let's go check out the cucumbers i think we might have some baby fruit forming so these cucumbers are doing well got little baby fruit and you'll notice the cucumbers have this white powder on them. That is diatomaceous earth. And that is an approach I am using to counteract the cucumber beetle issue that we've had this year. I've noticed it has helped a lot more than anything else I've done. I don't typically put diatomaceous earth in the garden unless it's a really bad infestation. And I always avoid the flowers um, or flowering areas so that I don't harm the pollinators. It did just rain, so the diatomaceous earth is no longer effective. So we've got some jalapenos in here, which are paler. I'm not sure why they're so pale. Serranos in here, which are getting quite large and will be loaded with fruit soon. Some banana peppers, lots of fruit there. Some different bells, the fruit down there, and a couple habaneras, as well as some sweet potato in here. I'm having an issue with my raspberry bed this year. These guys have some kind of weird fungal thing going on. If anyone knows what that is, let me know. Like a rust-like coloring on the leaves. They went from looking perfect to much less than perfect. Okay, let's head on over to the hygge culture bed where there is a lot of lovely things growing and some exciting things to show you guys. This is a warning from the past. We have calendula and tomatoes and some summer squash. Again, that's the DE on them. Basil and more squash and kale and tons of different kinds of um, zinnias and straw flower and kale. And it's growing really beautifully. And we'll head over to our brassica and garlic bed, which has seen a lot of changes. We'll continue to see changes in this bed over the next week as we flip this bed from garlic and brassicas to a fall no dig garden. So let's, let's see what we have going on now. So in this area right here, we've got our onions on the outside and remnants of fava beans on the inside. And a lot of these plants have just succumbed to some disease. So I'm gonna pull those out and bag them and trash them instead of using them as mulch. And then we have some lovely brassicas over here. I think this is a Brussels sprout plant, but I still am not certain because I don't know what it's doing. Um, we have some more Brussels sprouts over here. Broccoli that I've harvested most of. So I have harvested this one. Um, it looks like I still have to harvest that guy and that guy. And these are side shoots right in here. These are all volunteer tomatoes. I'm just letting them do their thing and see what happens. Uh, they came came up from last year and they're very healthy and large so this entire bed was tomatoes last year and now I let those guys just grow we'll see what happens 
we'll definitely get some fruit from them because I actually see um, some paste tomatoes on them. So that's kind of fun. It, I love volunteers. I love seeing what they do and what they're capable of. They're often way more vigorous than the ones you actually plant. So that is what's left of our garlic. We harvested that whole area. Uh, I do have some sad news about the garlic. As beautiful as it was and as large as the heads were, I did open one up today and found leek moth larva inside. So I don't know what that means yet. We'll see how much of the garlic has been affected. Super big bummer. I'm hoping that we'll still be able to plant a lot of it if um, not all of them are affected. We'll see. You know what? There's nothing else I can do other than see what happens. Beautiful garlic, but some clear issues with the pests with garlic this year. So back here we have a zucchini plant, which has a nice big fruit on it forming. That one should be ready tomorrow. And we have cheddar cauliflower. These guys are forming nice, beautiful heads. See, I don't see anything in there yet. There's another little head down there. So I think I have like seven of the cheddar cauliflower left. The broccoli back there are all producing side shoots. We've got some rogue grass growing. And then we have four tomatillo plants. They're just loaded, loaded with fruit of all sizes. Actually, it looks like a bunch of the fruit fell off. So I think we're having a lot of blossom drop on our nightshades because of the heat we've had. Like today was like a high of 95, which is not normal for us. So I do think we've had a lot of blossom drop for that reason, which is unfortunate. We can't control the weather, so. And then some really large summer squash plants back here. These guys are just massive. I've never had squash plants so big before. Just huge. So in here we've got our Yukon Gold potatoes. They're nearing the end of their life. Shouldn't be long before the plants completely die back and then eventually we'll, we'll harvest these guys. Potatoes is one of like our staple food sources, especially being vegan, plant-based. We eat a lot of potatoes. And so we grow a lot of potatoes and that's one of the things we really want to, it's one of the crops that we want to grow completely on our own and be sustainable with, especially since potatoes have a really long storage life. So we can grow them all, harvest them all and store them in our basement with certain precautions taken so that we can eat them all winter long. We've also got some beautiful Brussels sprouts in here and the Brussels will form along the stalk. but no real obvious sign of them yet. Here's the corn. So we actually have some corn forming here. So I'm gonna see how, how that looks. This corn up here is just massive. It's way taller than me. It's like two feet taller than me. And I just, it's only mid-July. I, I don't know why it grew so fast or so tall. But I'm really curious to see what happens. We've got glass gem and a popcorn in here. So we'll see what happens. It's just, it's so tall, so tall. Got more zucchini and then my determinant tomatoes, which I originally attempted to cage, but they've just gone like crazy. Um, but it looks like I have a bunch of zucchini that should be harvested tomorrow. Put a little guy in there. And these I've been harvesting from a lot. And I don't know if you can see in there, but there's some red fruit that needs, needs to be picked. Yeah, these guys are growing so vigorously. I've never had such vigorous determinate tomatoes. I just found a really evil pest. That guy right there that I just showed you, that is my least favorite garden pest and they cause so much damage in the garden that it um, almost completely makes it 
it makes it almost impossible for us to grow squash and then we have to rely on the store for our squash which we're going to again this year that is the squash vine borer it's my least it's my least favorite pest in the garden it's very very difficult to manage and extremely damaging it will basically destroy your entire your entire crop it lays eggs right at the base of your plant and then the eggs hatch they burrow into the base and they basically cut off the roots so your plant dies like in a matter of hours <laughs> as the borer larvae hatch and make their way inside your plants i don't know if anyone has any like amazing solutions that are organic and natural and work let me know in the comments i don't know what to do about vine borers i tried tin foil they laid the eggs below the tin foil like really really low i sprayed the base of the plants with bt so that when the eggs hatch that the larva wouldn't be able to survive that didn't work i'm seeing vine bore damage on my my plants i have my artichokes i'm gonna let these guys flower actually and i'm gonna save the seeds I'll save the seeds from these artichoke plants and then maybe I'll do a fun little giveaway or something with seeds from our garden and send somebody some artichoke seeds from our New York grown artichokes. These are, I believe a red potato or a purple potato, I can't remember some sweet potatoes, and then just these huge ground cherries. And then we have our Jarredale squash with another garden pest squash bug. And squash bug eggs, despite that, the squash is looking lovely. We have some Jarredale pumpkins forming up here. They're my favorite. But I love Jarredale. Because of all our squash issues this year, this might be the only trellis that fills out. It might be the only pumpkins that we get. And I'm going to focus on it. I'm going to pray that we get a Jarredale pumpkin. Um, that the plant doesn't die by borers or squash bugs or cucumber beetles. And that we have one full trellis that I can just because it is so lovely under here. The squash, the corn. Second favorite section of the garden is, is right in this area. Our nightshade alley with so many tomatoes and so many peppers. Let's take a look. You can see the tomatoes are huge. And the peppers are all down here. Some ripening ones down there. Those are honey drop. And then we have just a lot of fruit. And we'll have fruit, you know, all around this area as well. These guys are so loaded with fruit that they are falling over, but there's just tons of peppers. Let's see. You can see all the peppers on there. We need to get this tied up. This one, same deal, just falling over from the weight of all the peppers. All of these are just falling over. <laughs> these guys in here also just have tons of fruit on them. Lots of bells. Should be a good pepper year. And then you can see some ripening tomatoes. We've actually already harvested a couple large tomatoes. I harvested a couple from there. Some large paprika plants. Just a lot of growth in this area. Here's one of the lost squash I pulled yesterday because it had died from vine borer damage. You can see the vine borer damage at the base of that plant. Then coming over on the other side, we have this bean trellis, which is doing okay. Not doing so hot on this side, but doing better over here. These guys are continuing to grow up. 
Should have lots of pole beans soon. And then we have more peppers. These ones we've staked. Poblanos. I mean, you can see just all that fruit. The banana peppers are insane. I just, just so loaded. I need to come pick them for sure. Look at that. All the squash has been dusted with DE on just the leaves. For our cucumber beetle problem, this squash is growing all the way up here. And actually, right after I record, I'm going to come around and pick the squash bugs and put them in a bucket of soapy water because they're laying tons of eggs and they're going to do a ton of damage. What are you doing, Seiji? Hi. Little garden cat? Cayenne's in here, just so much fruit. There's so many green peppers in there. Um, corbachi peppers, so many peppers, so many. And then of course, lots of tomatoes too. We finally came in and um, pruned and tied up all the tomatoes to the trellis. So they're a lot more tame now. Before they were falling over onto the peppers, it was just, a mess, a big jungle, and now they're doing a lot better. And then over in this section, the little baby sugar pie pumpkins, and they're actually doing pretty well, so I'm hopeful these might be the other ones that grow up the trellis. So they're already to about, about here. More potatoes. This was, um, I think, red or purple. I can't remember. We have red and purple. I just don't remember which is which. And then eggplant, which is doing awesome. Japanese beetle, dinosaur kale, more ground cherries, and cucumbers that I'm training up this TP. They're doing okay, not great. A few more peppers, and I've got some okra back there. In this area, I have three zucchinis, um, some lovely beets. You can see the beets down there. Let's see some good sized beets. Some really pathetic little onions that aren't doing much. And then I harvested a large head just for dinner today of cabbage. I love zinnias and cosmos. More zinnias. I can tell I'm kind of radiating frustration right now and it's just Every time I look at the squash and I see the squash bugs and I see the vine borer damage and the cucumber beetles, I just get very deflated. So I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying not to allow myself to get to that place and instead, you know, like, look at those peppers. Like, pay attention to the peppers. Pay attention to the tomatoes. Pay attention to the artichokes and just the beauty of this space but it's just so easy to just let the things that are not going well just deflate you. And it's just such a growth exercise to constantly remind myself that life is like that. You're never gonna have everything going well all the time. And I just need to, I need to work on my perspective because I struggle with it. And I'm always encouraging other people to work on it and I'm working on it myself. So we're in this together. One beautiful spot that I really wanna show you guys is this um, herb garden. I'm gonna call it my pollinator garden from now on. So let's look at the pollinator garden. Look at that lovely basil, so excited about that. This is the pollinator garden. So we have yarrow, chamomile, echinacea. This is gonna be gorgeous um, pineapple sage. Chives and bee baham, which is just so beautiful. Three different kinds of lavender in here. We have like three little lavender. That one's doing really well. And then um, over there is sorrel that has gone to seed. It's just so pretty in here. One fun moment from this pollinator garden. Um, just the other day, Chris and I were out here and I was looking at the yarrow and I noticed tons of what I thought were little flies pollinating 
the flowers. So I walked over to it and I was just thinking, oh, those are little flies. And I was thinking, where are the bees? I wanna see the bees. And I get closer and I realized they're all like little baby bees. I don't know what kind of bees. They're all little bees collecting the pollen on their legs and you could see there were different types of wasps and different types of native bees. They're all just little babies and they're all covering because I, here I am thinking, oh, they're just little flies. Where are the bees? And I look and it's just, it's right in front of me. There are bees all over this plant. And I've been noticing all these little baby bees ever since. So next time I think I see flies, I'm gonna second guess that and go, go check for the baby bees. So pretty back there. Let's just take a quick look at the berms and swales. And you guys can say hi to Jim, Jim Jr. and Dwight, the roosters. What's up? What's up, fellas? As you can see, lots of weeds in here, but this is all watermelon. There's a couple good sized fruit I'll show you guys. So we've got a little watermelon right there. There's a little baby one over there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then there's another good sized one right over here. We've got our red onions, which actually are probably gonna be ready soon. And then lots of cantaloupe. The cantaloupe has gone wild. Two rows of sweet potatoes and dry beans, soybeans, and green beans. So it's a jungle. Hey friends, it's the next day. We're going to do a quick harvest of the squash and tomatoes and I guess anything else we see. So we'll, we'll take you guys with us as we harvest some stuff from the garden. Tell you everything I've seen, the friends I've made, and then you tell me how you've been. Look a little closer, it's been quite some time. But you gotta let me know if I'm out of line. That was the Italian that poked my face. <laughs> the one behind the yellow Oh, one the one you're looking at down there? Yeah. I think that's good. How to get it, though? Oh, whoops. <laughs> what? Oh, you got the green one back. <laughs> I got two. Oh, well. I meant to get this one. You know I played for love, but it got me on my knees. Now's the time to reap what I've sown Your words echoing in every single bone Underwater, so far out at sea There's no cure for what you're telling me And soon I'm on my way First big harvest. It is our first big harvest. And it's a handful. Yeah, it is. Excited to eat it. Yay! Tomato sandwiches for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> 